Hi, my name is Grace and I'm a second year medical school student at the University of Toronto. Hi, my name is Edwin. I'm also a second year medical student at the University of Toronto. And today we'll be sharing our tips and tricks on how to ace a medical school interview. So I just want to preface that everything that we say in this video is just based on our own experiences and different medical schools will have different interview styles as well as questions. So the purpose of this video is not to really dive too much into what exactly they'll ask, more so of just our own personal experiences and some tr tips and tricks that we hope to offer you. Yeah, great. So let's just get started with our first question. So Edwin, what did you do to prep for your medical school interviews? For my medical school interview prep, was probably not the best way of prepping. Um, I was a very last minute person. So I didn't really know too much about the interview process in general. I did hear about a couple of books that are available to help aid medical student or prospective medical students into in the interview processes. A lot of them focus on uh, ethical questions and ethical uh, dilemmas. Um, for example, transfusions, surrogacy, abortion, etc. So those are kind of nice topics that I was reading to really open my mind up to different possible answers, different perspectives, and to learn a little bit more about the field in general. Um, just having someone to practice with you, especially someone that knows you really well and knows some of your nervous tics. Uh, so that you're able to uh, clarify that for you, so then you're able to improve. It's also really, really useful. So how about you, Grace? Yeah, I totally agree. Like reading about, up about ethics and um, practicing a lot is how I practice um, for my interviews. I think that for me, it was a lot easier to explain my thoughts once I've already explained them once before, especially with anecdotes. I find it after that I've like done the interview, like um, answered a question once, like my mind can go through that like well-worn path and it makes me feel more comfortable and confident in my answers. Also, sometimes um, I thought that it would be better to have a more awareness of issues that were happening in the Canadian healthcare system as well as in the Canadian news in general. So I tried my best to keep up with the news and I tried to read some books as well on like um, big issues that were um, that occurred in the system itself. So that not only just made me a better interviewer, interviewee, I think, but also more aware and informed person. So that really helped. Yeah, I think I really like the um, part about where you mentioned having anecdotes. I think we've told a couple of uh, previous mentees and other prospective students that with the interviews, they're just really interested in learning more about you. So having a couple of your own personal lived experiences in the back of your head so that whenever there's a relevant question that pertains to that particular experiences, you're not kind of last minute digging uh, to find something to answer and you already have that experience already well thought out. Um, because you know you've already lived through it it's your own personal story to share so have that organized a little bit and um, use it whenever you feel like it's necessary to kind of showcase who you are as a person mm -hmm. and sometimes if you don't have a practice buddy what's best is also recording yourself to make sure that you actually end up practicing for the interview and also to see your own like uh, your own performance and your own though um, somebody else's perception of you so having that outside perspective is really nice yeah, that's a very good uh, point. Kind of awkward and very uncomfortable yeah. with your own voice, but really important, especially when you're doing things that you don't realize you are doing with facial expressions and body language. We can move on to the second question. Congratulations if you do receive an interview for a uh, medical school. So um, during an interview day, it can be incredibly nerve wracking. There's a lot of uh, new people, new faces, and it can be really intimidating. Grace, what are some ways that you were able to use to de-stress yourself in a very stressful environment, like during interview day? Mm -hmm. I think it's all about knowing yourself best. So for me, I think when I'm stressed and nervous, I get really chatty. Um, so actually having, um, going to the social events before interview day and also getting to meet applicants during interview day was really useful for me because I think I like to channel or express a lot of my nerve and nervous energy by talking to people and getting to know some of the students that were already there at the school and also like learning stories about the other applicants. But I think for other people, what they um, sometimes de-stressing looks like is having that those quiet moments of solitude and peace as well. So having that self-awareness of knowing what you need in that moment of time is really important. 
Yeah, so really just knowing uh, who you are as a person, knowing what kind of triggers a stressful uh, response and what kind of relaxes you is really, really important. Um, hopefully you will know that uh, a long time before the actual interview. Yeah. So fun fact, uh, Grace and I were in the same <laughs> literally next to each other uh, during our individual interviewing. So that was actually really nice to see. And both of us are very chatty people. So for me, uh, very similar to what Grace mentioned, I like to just meet new faces. I like to just chat and kind of learn a little bit about all the other applicants uh, because if, for me, everyone's in the same boat. We're all nervous wrecks. So kind of normalizing that situation is really helpful for me. Um, Number uh, one of the biggest tips I can say is take bathroom breaks. Uh, <laughs> don't be afraid to just go to the bathroom, um, even just to wash your face or just chant a mantra in front of the mirror before an interview is really useful. Just to set yourself um, on the ground and make sure that you're not overly stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I missed the fact that um, we totally were right next to each other. I feel like we both chatted so much to each um, with each other as well as a way to de-stress. Um, also, like often right before the interview, I always take a really deep breath. I find that really helps. And I have really sweaty palms, so I like to just wipe them <laughs> as well. And that just kind of is like a little um, thing that I do every time I, right before an interview. So that was really calming for me. Yeah, and I, I guess for us, we uh, we were fortunate to have in-person interviews, and uh, at least for U of T, they do offer like snacks and uh, water and drinks. So make sure you're well hydrated, make sure you're well rested, and make sure you're well fed, not overly fed or not overly hydrated, but just make sure that you're just going to a normal routine so that you're not, um, you know, super parched in the middle of a sentence when you're trying to give your answer. Yeah, for sure. That has definitely happened to me before. Um, so moving on to the next question then, Edwin, what do you think makes for a good interviewee? So what makes an applicant a good interviewee? I think with, um, as an interviewee, um, the first thing that you notice as an interviewer is uh, whether or not they're confident. And that starts without even saying a single word. And it doesn't go with just medical school applications or interviews, it's just for any sort of interview. So whether or not you are standing straight, you're having good eye contact, um, you're having a good smile and you're having a firm handshake, those are just kind of uh, small recipes to make any intro, uh, interviewer um, a good start. Mm -hmm. um, once you are actually starting to go into the meat of things and discussing some of the answers and questions, making sure that you have a firm idea of what your personal values and morals are, uh, because that's something that can be easily well observed by an interviewer who has seen many, many applicants, um, but also not so much to the point where you're so narrow-minded that you are unable to think of different perspectives or open the idea of different multiple answers. So just being really um, confident in your answers, but at the same time, making sure that they're not super um, narrow and have a bit of wiggle room for generalization is also really nice. Yeah, those are really good points. Um, I totally agree with all of those. I think for me, um, I think structure is really important. So being able to follow somebody's um, train of thought is always really helpful. I think that having making sure that your answers stand out. So a lot of um, a lot of I think a lot of the times we always want to say things that we think they um, the interviewer wants to hear, but it's also really important that they remember you. So making sure that you're coming up with new ideas or telling stories that are really personal to you and showing that you have like a creative line of thinking as well is um, I think really helps. And finally, I think showing vulnerability is always a great skill to have in inter I know for interviews it's really hard because you always want to come off really polished and professional but to a certain extent it's also nice to see when um, interviewees are real people too so being honest about weaknesses being honest about who you are as a person can help um, you really shine yeah so with that vulnerability um, I definitely agree with that um, in the interview process it can be very easily um, one way where one person asks a question and then other person responds and then back and forth. Um, I like to just give the advice of that, if possible, try to make the into, uh, interview a more casual conversation. 
you don't have that you know one-sided um, speech when you're talking to a friend or a loved one so try to integrate that as much as possible um, into that interviewer um, and try to make that kind of connection um, and that's just trying to read body language are they the someone that's really um, appreciative if you're making it more easygoing or whatnot so it's a lot of uh, making sure that you're kind of seeing the room and observing what's appropriate and what's not mm-hmm. yeah totally agree i think that it's really when you have somebody who's a really easy and personable interviewee it makes things a lot more comfortable for the interviewer as well which always leaves a positive attitude and that also just comes with like being yourself and remembering that um the purpose of the interview is for the interviewer to get to know you as a person and they're interested in getting to know you as a person and not just as a medical school student or a future physician too so remembering to being true to be true to yourself right and especially in this field um in medicine where physicians should be as authentic as personal as possible they don't want to be hiring medical student that is a robot. So showing that you're vulnerable, showing that you're able to make things casual and personable really is the starting point of making a great physician. So those are just awesome skills to have if you're able to exude that in an interview process. Mm-hmm. So with the last question, Grace, what are some final tips that you can give to uh, these prospective applicants on giving good interview and also being a great applicant? Hmm, that's so hard. I feel like we've covered so many different things about the interview process. Um, I think that one thing that comes to mind is just being ready to think on your feet and being confident even when you don't know the answer to something, being honest about your limits of your knowledge and what you do and don't know, and then trying and being confident enough in your own logic and line of thinking and how and who you are to be able to still give an answer. What about you, Edwin? Yeah, so more maybe uh, the actual conversation itself. Um, there are times where you may be receiving a question that may be incredibly out of the blue. You have no idea where to really uh, start from. It's really okay, um, especially coming from someone who did this, to ask for a few seconds to just pause and um, give yourself a few seconds to just really think about the question. Um, I think interviewers are more than understanding to realize this is a very stressful time for applicants. And if there is a question that needs clarification, please ask the interviewer to re-clarify uh, um, the question that's been asked to you. The worst thing you can do is to go on a tangent because you're nervous and you thought you heard something and you end up not answering the question that's been asked. And, you know, unfortunately, time's up. The interviewer only has what you've mentioned. So um, taking a deep breath, as Grace said before, and if you're kind of um, lost in the beginning of a question, just ask to take a break um, mm-hmm. and just re-ground yourself again. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. I think that answering, always actually answering the question is uh, so important. I've had many a time when I actually forgot the question that I was answering. I think also um, using your anecdotes wisely and also keeping them short. Because sometimes you want to give the you want to give the interviewer uh, just the amount of information that's needed for them to understand the situation. What we're often most more interested in seeing is your how your reflections and your own analysis and your big takeaways and what you have learned from the stories that you tell. And after the stories and the anecdotes that you've told, once the interview is concluded and it's asked. Do you have any questions? It's always good to have some questions um, just because you don't want to seem like you're ill-prepared or um, demonstrating that you don't really care. So asking questions is a great way to learn a little bit more about the program themselves or even have the interviewer uh, have an opportunity to talk about their own journey. So mm-hmm. asking a very open-ended question like, why, why did you go into medicine? What do you love most about medicine? Those things like that really engage the interviewer to become more of a casual conversation at the end of the day. And I feel like once you give that interviewer a bit of that positive uh, reinforcement, they're gonna think more, you highly as an applicant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I feel like we've covered so many topics today. Edwin, do you have any, any last minute tips? Um, honestly, just um, it's very stressful for everyone, especially with the pandemic going on. But making sure that you're well, both physically and mentally, 
Um, making sure you have a really strong support system is very, very important um, to be successful in anything you do. How about you, Grace? Talk to your friends inside of medicine. Talk to your friends who are in um, applying as well. Talk to your friends outside of the application cycle too. They always give great perspective. But other than that, I think that was a pretty great rundown of what we think at least goes into a good med school interview. Again, these are all just our own personal views and opinions. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to like leave some comments or questions down below. Thanks guys. We're talking to you all. Bye.